Crocodiles of the World, a unique zoo founded on a passion for the conservation of crocodiles. It saw its beginning as a personal collection which eventually needed expanding into larger facilities. It is now the home of over 150 individuals of 17 species of crocodiles, alligators and caimans from all over the world. We visited Crocodiles of the World to learn about the work going on in conservation of these amazing reptiles, namely the critically endangered Siamese crocodile. Um, well, Crocodiles of the World, it's, uh, we like crocodiles basically, and our view is that the future of zoos is to have a few key large zoos with an overall collection of you know, the big animals, lions, tigers and bears, oh my, um, with a few specialist zoos um, that, that have a taxon specific focus and ours, we like crocodiles, uh, that's going to be our focus and it makes sense to us because then you've got a lot of expertise uh, in one place on that group of animals um, so you can really focus your attention and actually learn a lot more about those animals so driving not just some of the conservation projects but also husbandry uh, practices for that group of animals so um, that's kind of where we're coming from. It's the UK's only crocodile zoo. Um, and the, the thing that we really like about this is that most people that come through the doors have just seen the few documentaries on crocodiles where they show you a Nile crocodile, maybe a, a saltwater crocodile in Australia trying to bite Steve Irwin, um, and potentially some American alligators. They don't realise how, you know, the variety of species that there are. So that's what we're trying to do at Crocodiles of the World. Um, I'm the head of the education, so the school groups that come in, I get to uh, deal with those, as well as any of the uh, research projects. I help out, uh, you know, structuring those and uh, and the conservation projects that we're involved with here at Crocs of the World. One of the uh, key species that we do work with is the Siamese crocodile. We have a lovely pair of Siamese crocodiles here, uh, Rebecca and Hugo. Uh, they hailed from a, a zoo largely in, in France and, um, and Denmark uh, is where the other uh, crocodile, I think Rebecca, came from there. Um, uh, and that pair, quite productive, so each year we get a, a, a nest from Rebecca. Um, a fun day, that one, going in and getting the eggs. Crocodilians are, of all species, are protective of the nest and of those eggs. Each, each year what we do very, very quickly is um, we think about each species that we're likely to get some eggs from that particular year um, and we try to de determine if we get eggs from these particular species, it would be great for us to hatch eggs from you know, this one, this one and this one um, and of those, how many eggs do we actually wish to incubate? We don't want to be overrun with crocodiles and alligators in Europe has a lim limited capacity for how many crocodiles and alligators it can cope with. Um, so what it's based on is uh, our requirements for future. We may need some for education use. Uh, we may need some for various projects that could include uh, exchanges with other zoos. And we, we also get requests for certain species. So that's how we base our egg collection and incubation. Um, but yeah, one, with the Siamese crocodiles, uh, we do like to incubate a few of those, uh, few of those animals. There is a, re a demand. Some of the zoos do require Siamese crocodiles, and we have helped other zoos with, um, you know, housing housing the species in the past, and continue to do so in the future. Um, ourselves, we use some of those crocodiles for educational uh, uses. Some of the keeper experiences, they get to weigh and measure some of these young animals. Um, and feed them, which is a bit exciting. Um, we don't actually put any back in with mum and dad, simply because that enclosure is not designed uh, for hatchlings, it's just too big. Uh, and there's too many little nooks and crannies that we might lose some of the little babies in, basically. Um, having said that, if it was designed around housing a, a group, we could actually put the babies back in because mum and dad would uh, almost invariably look after those babies uh, quite well. Uh, crocs and alligators, very good mums and dads, you may have seen those on the uh, documentaries. Um, the uh, other reason that we're really working a lot uh, with Siamese crocodiles is in the, in the wild they are critically endangered. Uh, now, critically endangered in the wild doesn't mean there's not many of them left, there aren't many of them left in the wild. What it's referring to is their ability to actually bounce back and that requires habitat uh, and it requires space. 
Uh, so some of these crocodilian species, especially uh, just over the last few, several decades, um, their habitat uh, has just shrunk and shrunk and shrunk. In other words, too many people on the planet uh, and, we're, and we're not being very nice to this planet. So there's fewer areas that are suitable for sign these crocodiles. When we do choose to incubate our eggs, uh, what we try to do is incubate uh, for both males and females. Now with crocodilians, uh, it is temperature dependent sex determination. So the temperature at which the egg incubates will determine the gender of the, uh, of the offspring. So what we usually do is we separate the clutch into two. One of them goes into an incubator set for uh, producing females the other into an incubator that produce, will hopefully anyway, produce males. Um, so that way, uh, if we do need to swap with other, other zoos, um, we've got a mix of genders for future breeding possibilities for a nice sustainable population in captivity in uh, European zoos, um, as well as if they do need to be released back into the wild, boy, is it better to have a mix of genders than to be putting the single uh, sex animals back into the wild. One, one thing that people do ask us a lot is how can we help with uh, crocodile conservation? Uh, especially you know, when you are in a country like the, the UK where there's no native crocodilians. Uh, the answer is to either support, come and visit crocodiles of the world, just by coming in and, and visiting uh, and seeing the different species. You will be helping because you will see more species than you've probably seen uh, anywhere else, more species than a lot of people actually even knew existed. Um, and that in increase, just increases the, uh, the respect and admiration that people have, um, the understanding that people have for crocodilians, um, and that always leads to positive conservation benefits. Um, so yeah, come along and visit us. Uh, the money that we, uh, we get from the lovely people that uh, walk through the doors, not only just maintains the place, but it also goes towards our conservation projects. So by coming in and helping us, uh, you are, uh, and you can adopt animals, all that sort of stuff. So if you like the idea of uh, what we're doing with the Siamese crocodiles, you can adopt the Siamese crocodile. Um, that money, actually some of that money does in fact go to our conservation project. So um, as, far as, uh, as far as that, what you can personally do is what everyone's telling you to do, being nice to the environment. So, you know, trying to be conservative with uh, energy use and water use and everything. Uh, they're kind of crucial because crocodiles don't exist by themselves in the wild. They exist as part of um, part of an ecosystem. So protecting biodiversity, that's the key to uh, all of us, not just for helping wildlife like crocodiles, uh, it, it's key to our survival too. So <laughs> you need to do it for yourself, not just for, for crocodiles really. So yeah, they're the recommendations. And also you can buy my book, uh, Crocodiles World on Amazon. Um, and um, yeah, any any money that I get, I always help with uh, crocodile conservation. So that'll help. It'll help me, and it'll help the crocodiles. Education and positive experiences are extremely beneficial for the conservation of animals with generally less appeal than large mammals. The rare chance to see so many species of crocodile up close is a unique and eye-opening experience. As is often the case in animal conservation, while the future of natural populations may be blurry, it is the work of the zoos such as this that gives species a fighting chance against extinction. You can help to support the ongoing work to protect crocodiles by visiting Crocodiles of the World or maybe even adopting a crocodile on their website. Thank you.